Hi there, and welcome to Neophyte.tv, the technology review with two points of view. My name is Ben Friedman. And I'm Tiffany Young, and every Monday we bring you two unique points of view on some of the latest gadgets, software, and websites, along with the week's top stories. Don't forget to visit our website at www.neophyte.tv to subscribe to this podcast or to send us your questions. You can even use our audio voice link to leave us voicemail questions using your computer's microphone. This week we'll be looking at the Sony DV Direct DVD burner, two different online banking websites, and video editing software, Pinnacle Studio 10. We'll also answer some of your questions sent to us via email. But first, let's take a look at some of the news making headlines this week. Just a few days after announcing their purchase of DVR company Medio, Yahoo announced Yahoo Go TV, their new platform to turn your PC into a media center. It's currently available as a free beta release from the company's website. Like Microsoft's media center, Yahoo Go TV is intended for PCs connected to large living room displays. The interface is designed for easy couch viewing and can be navigated via a remote control. Microsoft is entering the social network market currently led by MySpace.com and Friendster with its own entry wallop. Microsoft claimed the site, due to launch later this year, will offer users an entirely new way for consumers to express their individuality online, but they did not explain further. The new company is being spun out from Microsoft IP Ventures, which was formed in 2003. Seagate announced today that it's shipping its 750 gigabyte Barracuda hard drive. The drive represents an increase in capacity of 50% over the previous industry maximum of 500 gigabytes and is the first 3.5 inch internal drive in the industry to achieve 750 gigabytes using perpendicular magnetic recording technology. Surprisingly, the drive won't carry a high premium price, says Seagate even though it's first to market at this capacity. Seeking to repeat its success with the Centrino platform for notebook PCs, Intel said this week it will launch vPro, a collection of hardware and software services based on its new Conro processor for business desktops. Conro is not due out until the third quarter, but Intel announced vPro now to give vendors time to build it into their PCs. The vPro package will deliver low IT maintenance costs, high security, and better energy efficiency. Microsoft has introduced a new program that will test to see if customers have a genuine version of its Office productivity suite. The move is part of Microsoft's continued efforts to prevent software piracy and the distribution of counterfeit copies of its software. Office Genuine Advantage, as it's called, is set to join the Windows Genuine Advantage program that checks to see if your copy of Windows is official. Sony announced it will begin offering a software update for the PlayStation Portable that adds several features, including support for Flash content and the ability to save audio podcasts. At present, the PSP's web browser, which itself was added to the device through a software update last year, doesn't display Flash content. The update will bring basic compatibility with Macromedia Flash 6, although Sony notes not all functions are supported. On the podcast site, the current player can only handle live streams of files captured through RSS, but with the updates, users will be able to download and store files to Memory Stick for offline playback. For more than 20 years, VideoGuys.com has been the leading sellers of digital video editing and production equipment, and now they are leading the way into high def. Whether you're just getting started in the video editing or you're a seasoned broadcast professional, VideoGuys.com has the information you need to find the best hardware and software for your needs. Their knowledgeable staff will help you put together a system to edit DV, HDV and HD, and create DVDs, HD DVDs, and Blu-ray DVD discs. Visit them today at www.videoguys.com, and don't forget they have a 30-day money-back guarantee and free tech support on every product they sell. Welcome back to Neophyte.tv.
In this spotlight, we're going to be covering the DVD Direct Sony uh, DV Direct product. And what this product does is actually pretty amazing in my opinion. Um, it's easy to use. It's portable. Uh, you can hook it up to a PC or a TiVo. And you can actually hook it up directly to your camcorder and burn your DVDs. Um, what I found to work really well in my experience was uh, I didn't really have to even pick up a manual with this. It was so easy to use. Which is, you know, we all know how much you love reading manuals. Right, right. I, You're like Miss Manual if, Reader. If, if, I have to, if I have to read a manual, I'm frustrated. <laughs> So I do not want Manual to... Manual is just the guy who cuts your lawn, right? Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So no manual needed for this. This was actually very, very simple. Um, it worked really well with um, my TiVo, which I loved. Uh, no problems hooking it up. It was just very, very basic. Um, and I managed to copy 12, 13, 14 mini DV camcorder disc to DVD in a matter of maybe four or five hours. Just kind of watching it, monitoring it, and changing out the tape. It was great. It was great. I got to admit, I, I like the product because it's small, it's compact, uh, compact and, and works well. A couple of issues. First of all, it's kind of pricey. This one was, what, 190 bucks. About when you that, consider yeah. that if mm -hmm. you do have a computer, uh, you can buy a, uh, you know, a DVD burner uh, for you know, 30, 40 bucks, and you can buy DVD players that will burn as well for a lot less than 190 bucks. But not, but they're not easy to use. No, I got to admit, you know, it is yeah. nice having the ease of use. Right. Uh, that uh, is on here. Um, right. You can also hook it to a PC, so it does double as a as a, a drive if you want to have a drive. Right. But here's the big problem. Now you you recorded from your TiVo, which is right. great because the TiVo has multiple video outputs, so you can leave it hooked up to your. Uh, television screen at the same time as you're recording it, so you can see right. what you're recording. Exactly. If you have a DVD player with just one output uh, or a VHS... Old school, old school. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of DVD players only have one output, a lot of video players only have one output, which means you need to unhook it from your TV and then right. you have to plug it in. Let me show you on the back. You have to plug it in uh, to these uh, inputs on the back. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but there are no outputs here, so there's no way to then hook this up to your... It's not a DVD player. You can't right. play back DVDs on this. So while you're trying to edit, um, there's no way to see what you're editing. That's true. That's you kind of have to hit play and, and guess. Right, but uh, at the same time... Uh, if you want the ease of you, I mean, basically, I mean, how many of us have those camcorder tapes laying around from, you know, 10 years ago? By the way, tip of the week, uh, do not throw away your old camcorders because you will need them to play back your old camcorder tapes. Don't give them away to friends. Keep them, my friends, because you need them to burn um, your tapes to uh, DVD. That's such true. As, you know, I have one of those this. old... Don't uh, throw them away. I have mm -hmm. one of those old 8 millimeter camcorders. Right. And you're right, it's been sitting in my closet for years and years and years, and I've got a bunch of old tapes that right. I do need to convert to DVD. That is something right. this would probably be good exactly, for. Exactly, exactly. And, and I end up giving my old stuff away and not even thinking about, you know, replaying these tapes, which I'm going to need later. Um, Have you ever given a camera away with, like, a tape still in it? I, and, uh, I, yeah, <laughs> actually, know. well, I've given away, I, I've sold a car. And there's questionable material on that tape. And, uh, no, I don't have any, Ben. <laughs> no, it's never happened to me. I'm oh, just, oh, it was just a friend, I, right, someone, someone I, I knew once. I heard about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, uh, I do like the fact that it's portable. It's small, it's portable. You it's can very take lightweight, it. right, it is lightweight. very, very lightweight. And, and like I said, I mean, look, there's only a few buttons on the front. It, it can't be that confusing when there are so few buttons. So it's basically yeah. plug and play. It really and is. It's a I, plug and play. I, I, you know, I was going to give it a, a, a lower score. I was going to give it one or two because... Uh, I thought it was pricey. It didn't have that video output. But the fact that you can hook it up to your computer and use it uh, as a DVD burner from right. your PC as well, that put it up to it. So I give it three out of five. And I'm going to give it a five out of five because I absolutely love it. The ease of use makes this so worth it. And who wants to plug in their camcorder with a tape to the computer or to your TV to show you know, your videos to your friends? I mean, it's burn. It's in their DVD. It's in my DVD. Easy to copy. Can't, can't beat it. A, number, a five for sure. So that's five for Tiffany, yeah. three for me. So that's eight out of ten for the Sony DV Direct DVD burner. And a great little product. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this. If you're looking for a custom-built computer system created to the exact specifications you're looking for, look no further than Puget Custom Computers at www.pugetcustomcomputers.com. Puget builds computers the way you want them built. 
They work hard to take the hype out of computer building, to help you make good decisions, and to help save you from paying for things you don't need. It's their goal to provide you with everything you need to have a hassle-free computing experience. For your next PC, look up www.pugetcustomcomputers.com. And welcome back to Neophyte.tv. In this spotlight section, we're actually going to have a look at a couple of different online banking sites, actually the online banking sites that we use. You use... U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank. Mm -hmm. And I use Bank of America, or B of A as it used to be called. Right. But you know what? They don't, they don't like it being called B of A anymore. They've taken that off of all of their stuff. Now it's Bank of America. You have to say Bank of America. I can't keep up. I mean, one bank's buying the other bank, and the next thing you know, you're on one. You think you're on one banking website, and you're actually on on, on another. And you know, I don't want to digress. To up, but which is the real American bank? U.S. Bank or Bank of America? I don't know. Which is I, the real American bank? One U.S. Bank. It sounds U.S. You know, they're bank probably all America. foreign. That's what it, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> they're all they're all owned by some sheik in Kuwait or it, something. Exactly. Not not there's anything wrong with that. You no, know, but, no. but send us your oil, please. Anyway, yeah, right. <laughs> back to online banking. So. Uh, I use Bank of America, and I have to tell you, it's a fantastic service. I love it. I, I, uh, it's gotten better over the last uh, few years, but I right. use Quicken for my uh, accounting and such. It integrates right in there, and I love the. Uh, um, I love the easy way to transfer money mm. from you know my Roth IRA to this or to that or to this account or that account. Like you have an IRA, you know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> shh, my wife, right? And uh, she thinks it's an IRA. Right. It's actually a boat fund. But, uh, it's your gadget fund. But I got to tell you, you know what? Something I've noticed lately is, and this is a problem uh, with mm. uh, online banking sites, is phishing email. Right. Now, when I talk about phishing email, I'm not talking about you know. Phish, Fishing. I'm talking about. I get emails that look like they're from Bank of America, mm. and they're not. They're from some scam site that says, "Log on." You know, click. Oh, you know, your uh, address is unverified, or your card right. is about to run out of time. Click here to log in and verify your security uh, information. Right. And if you do that, you think you're on Bank of America site. It looks just like Bank of America site, but it's not Bank of America site. Have you ever gotten these kind of emails? I have, I have, and I'll tell you, folks, they're very, very, very deceiving. Um, they even they've they've gotten so good at it that I mean, you really have to be very careful. They'll have the security emblems on them. I mean, exact yeah, replica. Yeah, it's, it's like a total ripoff of the actual site. You know, one way that I did notice to tell um, on the last one that I got is that if you try to click the links on the replica site, the links won't go anywhere. On the replica site. Ah. So, so if you think that you're not sure what's going on, well, for, of course, first contact your bank right. first. The other thing you is know, if you so. do click on the link in your email to go to where it is, take a look and see if the address is the proper address from your bank. But you know what? Right, that's true too. To be safe, just don't click on a link in an email. If, you, if it says go to bankofamerica.com or wherever you right. bank, just... Right. Open a browser and type it in yourself, right. and, and don't don't click on the links. And and they'll they'll misspell a word. They'll add an extra W. Something you know, US yeah. being N K K or you know <laughs> something like they, it's Bank so B A N Q U E. Right, right. They make it so uh, so so hard to you know catch catch it. And I mean, a couple of times, I mean, I was like, oh wow, what really is going on? And I look at it, and I, I was almost fooled, and I was embarrassed by it, but it was true. It was now, true. what Bank of America has done, I think they've gone a bit paranoid uh, with this whole security issue. They now make, the, they, I don't know if U.S. Bank does this, they made me choose a picture. Oh, no, I yeah, haven't got that one. Yeah, I had one. to choose a uh -uh. picture from a, a, a couple of choices, a few dozen choices, and mine was a picture of a little bird. <laughs> so for all the people Stay that want to get into your account. Should I not have said that? Okay, you now should I have not change my picture. Yeah, yeah, right. And here's my password. <laughs> right. So right now what happens is I go to the website, I type uh. in my name, I type in my password, and it, then it comes back and it says, is this your picture? You know, is, are you, well, is this the right good. picture? And if, good. and if you don't right. see the right picture, you know, if you see, you know, a uh, small dog uh -huh. instead of a little bird, you know, it's not the right site and, and, and what have you. Right. Anyway. Tell me about your online banking experience. Uh, well, it started out a little rocky. I was with uh, U.S. Bank um, 
uh, now I'm with U.S. Bank. I was formerly with uh, Bank One, and I was really excited about the online bill pay service. However, I was, of course, the forerunner and the go-getter, the one that the wanted adopter. to be yet yeah, the one that 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 all the technical issues are now corrected because of us go-getters. So you were the beta that, tester. Yeah, and that's what happens. You know, be careful when you go and you're the, the when you're especially financially putting your yourself out there um, that you're not maybe the first or second or third you know runner in, you know in that marathon because you may end up being the one that ends up getting uh, in the kind of situation I did, which is um, I was sending my mortgage payments um, in. They were coming out of my account as they were uh, supposed to be. They were clearing. Three months later, I get a call from my mortgage company, and they hadn't received a payment in 90 days. Now, we all know what happens if the mortgage company hasn't received a payment in 90 days. Don't they, like, sell so, your house? Yeah, right. They're like, uh, they, they sell they it come, from under you? Yeah, they come and they get your, your, your furniture and help you move out. Now, was it hard to clear up the issue? It, you know, it was. I had to actually get a letter from... Uh, Bank One, they were pretty good about fixing it. They credited the money. However, when you try and fix what's on your, you know, the, the credit report thing that follows, I had to keep that letter on file for, and this is probably five years ago, um, on file, and I had to keep sending it into the credit bureau so it was consistently right. um, corrected. So hopefully so. those sort of bugs have uh, been worked out. Right. I love the bill pay uh, service on my site. It works now, yeah. right? Right. I mean, they seem to fix that, so I'm I not saying that's right. an issue now. So for me, but I it have a bunch issue. of you know, my, so. you know, all my bills that I have to go into the cable bill right. and all that stuff because I can't stand paying those bills. You know, yeah, and it seems like you pay them and then you turn around and there's right. another bill. As long there. as it's free, I'll keep doing it. When they start charging, if they start charging, if they try to start charging, it's no longer a free service. I'll maybe rethink that. Rethink so, that, so. Uh, one other thing though that I noticed now is that there's ads now. Uh, coming right. on my online banking site, and oh. right now, now right now, they're Bank of America ads. I'll be banking away, just happy-go-lucky, and all of a sudden, it's a, would you like a new introductory right. APR credit card? Uh, right. Would you like to refinance your your, your house? How long is it going to be before it's, you know, do you need to regrow your hair or, you know, <laughs> you know right, you know. Or, right. <laughs> Or other ads that's good. That we that's all true. Get that's that true. I, I mean, know, yeah. and and see, do you need natural male enhancements. Yeah, and we do. We do. A full, I don't. We we do. We, so we do. I'm not going to touch that. We do a full circle all the way back around to the. It's free. What in the world is really free? You know, and at some point we're going to pay for it. We already are paying. You know, for yes, we know all those banks know, are just losing rate. so much money these days. Exactly. So, uh, I don't know how they don't just you know go bankrupt. Right. It's right. amazing to me. So you know, from my Bank of America experience, I really enjoy it. I would. Uh, I'd give it a four out of five. Yeah, I'm still a little suffering from that. That little uh, mortgage, yeah, that mortgage uh, problem that I had. Although I, I very shyly came back to it in the last year. It took me that long to trust again that maybe it's now working. So I'm going to give it a three out of five because we're going from a zero yeah. <laughs> where I started. So I'm going to give it a three. So that's three for three. Tiffany and four for me. That's seven mm -hmm. out of ten. And I, I, I'd be comfortable recommending anyone who's considering it to yep. go ahead and get it, you know, take a good look at uh, online banking. Be careful of phishing. Right. And be careful of those uh, right. phishing scams. Exactly. And uh, we'll be right back after this. Planning an event or convention? Launching a new product? Want to give potential trade show customers direct professional access to your website? Short term, Kiosk Rentals from kioskforrent.com is the answer. Prompt, friendly service and commitment to customer care will make your kiosk rental easy and worry-free. So whether you need a multi-unit package for a marketing campaign, two units for a trade show, or a single unit to add professionalism to a special event, kioskforrent.com is your preferred kiosk rental solution. And welcome back to Neophyte.tv. Uh, in this product spotlight, we're going to look at a piece of uh, video editing software that is targeted squarely at consumers. It's called Pinnacle Studio 10. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, by 10, you'd think they'd get everything right in, uh, right in this software. It's the 10th version of something. Although, having said that, I think Microsoft's coming out with Office 11 or 12 or something now, right. and Lord knows there's still bugs Isn't it in the that. same thing, one step forward, two step backs in technology? Yeah, you know, it's a good, it's actually, <laughs> when you think about it, it's a, a good thing they don't use negative numbers, or we could right. be, you know, with you know, Microsoft Office negative four. <laughs> That's so true. Uh, or something like that. That's so true. Um, 
<laughs> but I know you use, you've used Pinnacle Studio for a while, right? You right, for right. Nine and nine, and I just got ten a couple of days ago. Again, that forerunner, you know, I'm kind of plowing through it and, and seeing what's new, what's different, what's working, what's not. So, if, t speaking of the Studio line, you know, version nine and ten, what's what's your experience? Right. Um, I think Studio Pinnacle Studios is very easy to use. Um, what I really like about it is that it's very visual. You can kind of go in and you can really see how your video is coming together within the actual software program. I, I really like that about it. Um, I'm more of kind of a visual person, so for, for me, it works. Um, One thing uh, I know they've added with Studio 10, which right. I was being the geeky guy that I am, is they you can now export to iPod and yes, PlayStation. Yes, isn't that cool? Or not PlayStation, a PSP. PSP, PlayStation, right, PlayStation, PSP. Do you have one of those? A PSP, I do. I do. I, uh, I don't, but I do have an iPod. Well, I have both. Yeah. <laughs> so you can, I have uh, more than you do. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go out and get a PlayStation. Now. I, know, I have to go right. out and get a PlayStation. I know. So, will you use this for your iPod videos? You'll well, I will. I will because I I do a little bit of you know very kind of rudimentary Neanderthal you know um, uh, producing of our own you know home videos and pictures and stuff. And I do it. I, I come out maybe once every three to four months. I call it digital scrapbooking instead of the traditional you know scrapbooking that's real popular right now. I do it because I, I it's my way of preserving you know my memories and and putting that on. On iPod, wow, that's cool. You know, now I can put on my iPod to my friends. Um, you know, the video on the go, which I love. Yeah, I uh, I'm not a huge fan of Pinnacle Studio, and I tell you why. And I I like Adobe mm -hmm. Premiere, the uh, and Premiere Elements, which is the same sort of price range right. under a hundred dollars uh, for it. And mostly, it has to do mm -hmm. with stability. I don't know about you, but for, uh, you know. I used Pinnacle Studio back in the Studio Seven and those sort of days, right. and it was pretty robust. I don't know about you, but I find 9 and 10 just crashes all the time. Uh, you know, I have to say that that is my number one problem with the studios, 9 and 10. I, and so let me I tell you think it was my save computer, your you know. Work often. Save your work oh, often. Oh, that's a must. Because Absolutely. Let me tell yeah, you, that's really it, important. They do not have the stability of this product down I think. Yeah, I, you know, that's funny. I'm glad you said that because I thought I was the only one having that problem, that it was crashing just on me because I was doing something wrong. But you know because you're, you just know, you understand the platform's better. Just every program crashes under right, you. You yeah, look right. at the computer like, the wrong yeah, way, it yeah. crashes. I, I know, I, I know. So I'm assuming it's user error on my end. And I don't want to, you know, Bash, well, a, you know, bash a program because I think I'm crashing it. But yeah, thanks. No, it thanks does. for making me well, feel better. It's not me. Day, it's not me. Right. It, it, uh, it does crash a lot. So. And if you call tech support, you get one free tech support call. That's and then true. they charge you after that. I, I think it's like 25 bucks or something. Yeah. And I think that. that uh, and, I, and I try to convince them, it's, you're the one that has the program it's your, that's it's crashing. It's your crashy program. Right. Here. Don't make me pay no, this. No, 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 no. That's the one thing that's that's like the worst part of it. The rest of it, though, if you save your work often and you you um, it, use it, it's very user friendly. It really, really is. And you know, I don't know about Adobe. I haven't used Adobe, but Pinnacle Studios has been really my staple for the last four or five years. So. so Personally, I would give this. Uh, I give this program a, a three out of five. I think it is easy to use. Right. Uh, I, I do like uh, like that, and I like the iPod and the PSP features. Yeah, that's but it, cool. It that's crashes really cool. too much for me. I don't like the uh, the uh, tech support. Um, it's, it's just too buggy. I'd rather go with Adobe Premiere. So three out of five for me. I'm going to give it four out of five. It's minus a point for crashing. That's a little irritating. It's a lot irritating, but it's such a good program. I'm still going to give it a four. And they do give you one free text support call, and the help menu is excellent. It really does answer 99.9% .9 of my questions. So uh, four out of five. That's four out of five for yeah. Tiffany, and three out of five for me. That's seven yeah. out of ten. And uh, so, you know, I think that's a pretty good recommendation for a pretty good, easy-to-use product. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And uh, we'll be right back. As a leader in the video industry for over 10 years, SmartSound has defined innovation in music scoring. Now with their flagship product, Sonic Fire Pro version 4, they take the art of music scoring to a new level. This new version introduces a technology called mood mapping. Mood mapping allows the user to simply identify points on a timeline where the mood of their video changes and apply mood markers. Then the user simply selects the mix or feel of the music from a pull-down menu that fits the mood of each scene best. With a simple click of the mouse, you can duck for dialogue, make the music atmospheric, make it heavy, take out the horns, limit it to just drums and bass, or remove the melody. Whatever mix and feel you want, it's now immediately at your fingertips. And if you want to customize it further, you have easy access to each instrument or section. Mood mapping will redefine audio for video. 
See it in action at www.smartsound.com. Welcome back to Neophyte.tv. Now we're going into the section of our show where we cover viewers' emails. And the first question uh, that we're going to be covering is, should I buy a small point-and-click camera or a larger digital SLR camera? Well, I think, Ben, maybe you could start with that. I, myself, if you only have one camera, I think it's good to go with the SLR because you get the best okay. quality pictures. They've come way down in price. You can, can get... You Explain, sorry. Can you explain to our viewers what SLR means ah, for? Well, definitely. So okay. S, there's really two kinds of cameras you can buy these is. days. Um, you know, staying away from the cell phone, you know, built-in cameras. You can buy those right. little point-and-click ones that are, you know, yay big, uh, tiny fit in your pocket. And then there's the SLR, which are the kind uh, used to mean single lens reflex, okay. but with okay. digital in the digital world now, it really means the style of camera that is is the has got the sort of big black body with a round lens out front that you okay, hold right. and it's larger right okay now, i get it i must i must admit no camera is good if you don't take it with you and if, it's, <laughs> and if it has that large that's too big that's so true right no camera is right. going to get a good picture if you don't take it with you and if it's too big that you're not going to take it with you um, mm. then you you know uh, then obviously it's better to have a small one but i think the slr is bigger you're going to get more megapixels and a better quality lens on the SLR. What do you mean by more megapixels? So you're, you know, you're going to get a five megapixel camera, or it's eight or ten. You know, the higher number of megapixels on the, right. on the digital camera. But, but what we have out now is a five and easy, tiny, little itty bitty five megapixel camera. I mean, when you walk into someone's home, do you, re I mean, do you see for the most part people that have big giant pictures blown up? And five megapixel get you to what, like what size with high quality? Well, 11 would, by 14 it, that's or true. something? I gotta, it's true. If you're, if you're talking about a 4 by 6 photo, you probably can't tell the difference between 5 megapixel and 8 megapixel. Well, right. It's only if you need to like zoom in on, on a nostril or something. <laughs> right. And if you want to blow it up. <laughs> so it is still good for small photos, but right. you, can, you can blow up more. and you, know, you can cut out your ex-boyfriend from the photo and just blow yourself up when you've right. got more megapixels. But I like what you said about that, you know, if you don't have a camera, you're not going to have a picture. That's right. So, and, and really when it comes down it to it, home. And, and when it comes down to it, after you get over the ambience of, wow, this is like a 10 megapixel or something cool like that, and you're running out the door, are you going to be more, you know, apt, apt to grab that little small camera you can stick in your pocket or go, oh man, I got to bring that, but I also need that and I got to bring a bag to put it in. You know, I, I think you lose... One, uh, one lose. final point. I mean, that's a, that's a great yeah. point. One final right. point on SLR cameras, they usually have more manual controls. So if you like to be creative and do funky stuff... So maybe it's more for a photographer. More for a photographer. At this point. Or a at this photographer, point. photographer hobbyist. Right, uh, a hobby, yeah, right. You know, and or somebody who likes to, you know, twiddle with the, the manual controls of the camera. Exactly, right. Our next email is, I just bought a new PC. What software is most important to antivirus. install right away? Antivirus. 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 <laughs> antivirus. That is the number one most important software you can install first. And Ben, can you tell us why? Yes, because if you don't install it, you're going to get viruses. The, uh, it's true. <laughs> very, want... very good, Ben. You get an A plus for the day. <laughs> I got to tell you, it, uh, especially if it's unpatched. Yeah. And let me tell yeah. you, I, there's only one thing that I would do before I installed the antivirus. Oh. And that is I would go into the Windows Update section and do mm. all the updates. Because when you buy a new computer, right. if it's been sitting on the shelf oh, for a while... Oh, that's true, that's true, that's true. Now, mm -hmm. so don't, I'm not saying you're wrong. I think uh, it's great. I think you're right. First thing to install is antivirus. And there, right. are some, there are some great packages you can buy. There are also some great free ones. For instance... My personal uh, antivirus of choice is Avast. Have you heard of Avast? No. It's not. No, a, it's, it's it's certified by all the antivirus you know certification right. places, but uh, it's free for you personal use. So you know it's it's, it's it, you don't have to go out and buy it. We put up a link on the. Site. I will put up a link Thank on you. the site for right. the Avast. Uh, I think it's Avast.com, but I'll I'll double check that and put okay. a link up on the website. Um, what. I would do first is go to Windows Update and run through all the updates. And sometimes you have to reboot a couple of times, and mm -hmm. sometimes you have to uh, run it two or three times to get all the updates. Then you'll have all the patches right. for the other stuff. Makes sense. Makes what sense. about uh, spyware software, anti-spyware? Um, what do I think works? Do you think, it, it, I, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I would also, after, right after antivirus, I would install anti-spyware. Absolutely, anti-spyware. Oh, right. It, it's the most miserable experience when you're trying to get something done and you get, you know, you get that spyware just popping up all over the place. It's I, uh, I went over to my... Uh, so frustrating. I went over so to my uh, mother-in-law's house a while back. She did not have anti-spyware. She had uh -oh. antivirus, so there was no viruses. 
every time she opened a browser window, right. no kidding, there were 10 <laughs> other windows that popped up with an offer for this, an offer for that. And, and right. because she's a fairly casual user, I don't think she realized this is not, you know, Normal, you shouldn't right. have 10 new windows opening every time you click on a web page. Right. And she was just, you know, hiding them all, ignoring them. And I'd go down to her taskbar and she'd have, you know, 16 wow. And that's a good way to crash open. a computer. It really is because you get, so, right, you get so many um, pop-ups that, you know, it, it, and it just like multiplies like, like gremlins. You throw water on it and it just keeps on going. Right. Yeah, I've, I've had that. I feel like I've been attacked. Like like the invaders have come. Yeah, I do. It's like my my computer's like my my personal space, you know. And then I I'm like I didn't invite you in. So you, summing you get up, out. Uh, you get out. would you agree with me? Do all the Windows updates? Yes, I agree. Install antivirus. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then I put some spyware, anti spyware on, and I'll put right. some links to some uh, different anti spyware programs on in the uh, yeah that would be great, especially well. the free ones. I love those. And that's all the time we have for today. Uh, don't forget to go to our website, www.neo-fight.tv. <laughs> And, it's a dash uh, and a dot. There's a dash and a dot. And bookmark, <laughs> bookmark right. the site. You can also uh, subscribe to the show uh, uh, with uh, iTunes or all the other various pod, uh, podcasting sites. Uh, and we hope to see you next week. Send us a video blog or an email. Uh, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Any questions that we might be able to answer. Thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>